Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Namaste so karma is the trap. That's what keeps us in this material world. Because everything we do is a result of karma from previous lives. And those actions create karma for the next life. So you see, it's eternal, samsara. Sangsara means the wheel, the endless wheel of birth and death. There's literally only one way out, and that is to perform our actions as a sacrifice for the Supreme. That's karma yoga. And that's what we're talking about here. That's the beginning and the foundation of the authentic spiritual path. And we're not talking about religion here. Religion is made up of rules and regulations, external, morality, and so on. But spirituality is based on consciousness. And the consciousness of being aware of the Supreme in any form, Brahman, Paramatma, the different forms of Bhagavan, Bhagavati, uh, male and female forms of God, or the formless Brahman, the Supreme Consciousness. Any of those can be the object of our karma yoga. Remember, yoga means linking, hooking up together. So when we link with the Supreme by the process of karma yoga, those actions do not create any further karma. Which leads us to the verse for today. Nahi kashchikshanamapi jatu tishtatya karma krit Karyate yavasha karma sarvak prakriti jair gunai. Everyone must act according to qualities acquired from the modes of material nature. Therefore, no one can refrain from doing something, not even for a moment. Just observe yourself. Watch yourself. Every moment we are thinking, we are perceiving, we are talking either to ourselves or to others. We are acting in different ways. Even sleeping is an action. So we cannot escape action. There's no way out of it. The body with which we are identified is performing activities at every moment. And these activities are according to the three modes of material nature, goodness or sattva guna, passion, rajoguna, or ignorance, tamoguna. So people who have no connection with God, who are viyogi, are called pashu. Pashu means rope, but it's also a symbol for an animal because animals have to be kept controlled and tied with ropes. So similarly, the pashu, human beings who are basically uh, two-legged animals, are bound by ropes of karma. This is how God and goddess control the universe. They don't have to be like watching over your shoulder every minute. That's ridiculous. 
but they create the laws of material nature in such a way that everyone is bound by the reactions to their activities, which are going on at every moment. So, if these actions are not performed in yoga, karma yoga, then they're called uh, akarma, or sorry, Then they're called unre undesirable actions, ugra karma. So this ugra karma is basically a human being acting like an animal, following the dictates of the senses. As long as we follow the senses, we are basically stuck in this material world. And even if we perform activities in the modes of passion, then we're still stuck because passion gives rise to unlimited desires. Huh? You know, you pursue the fruit of a desire and eventually you attain it, but it's never fully satisfying. We've all experienced this. We get something that we want or that we think we want and it turns out to be unsatisfying. There's always something wrong, something incomplete. So this keeps us bound, just like actions in the mode of ignorance, acting like an animal, just following the senses without any critical thinking. But those who act in the mode of goodness, sattva guna or satya guna, they are connected with God through the yoga system. And by yoga system, I don't mean just uh, asanas, like hatha yoga, which is so popular these days. That's not really yoga. It becomes yoga when it is done as a sacrifice to the Supreme. Now, karma yoga not only includes religious rituals, prayers, offerings, austerity, sacrifices of different kinds, but it also includes giving gifts in charity, learning from the scriptures or from a spiritual teacher, and it includes right livelihood, which means earning your living in a way that does not harm others, honestly, by one's own uh, work and endeavor. So that kind of cuts out Wall Street. <laughs> but to work for God, to offer the results of one's work to God, this is the highest form of karma yoga. Why is that? Every time we perform an action in consciousness of God, we create impressions in the mind. And these impressions add up over time and they create attitudes. Who was it? Some British writer said, thoughts lead to words. Words lead to speech. Speech leads to action. Action leads to habit. Habit leads to character. And character is what determines our destiny. Very intelligent saying. So the character that we create built up of habits that we cultivate by thinking pure thoughts and performing pure actions, actions linked to God, eventually add up to the character of a sadhu, a saintly person, a person who deserves liberation from this material world. And what happens is, at the end of life, all these impressions that are uh, built into the mind by our constant activities are relived very quickly, in a, a few minutes. This is called uh, life evaluation. 
and it happens just before leaving the body at death. It's like the, the tape of the mind is rewound very fast. And we get to re-experience all the things that we did, said, heard, and so on, thought, and so on, during our lifetime. So in other words, the contents of the mind at the time of death are the sum total of the contents of the mind during the entire life. And this then is compressed, huh? like a data compression algorithm. And it becomes the seed of the next life. So the quality of the next life is directly dependent on the quality of the impressions in the mind as collected over an entire lifetime. That means what we do today determines our destiny in the next life tomorrow. Because death can happen at any time. And you see, this is another reason why God or goddess doesn't have to directly judge those who are leaving the body. Huh? They don't have to be directly involved. They simply create the laws of nature that do that for them. So because one has to review one's entire life before leaving the body, that creates a certain mood, a certain uh, state of consciousness, which is reflected then in the next body, the next existence that individual accepts. So in other words, we ourselves are judge and jury at the time of death. We ourselves determine the state of being we attain in the next life. Because we can't stop action or karma, even for a moment. Therefore, we should ensure that all of our activities, as far as possible, are done in the service of God-realization, self-realization, realization of consciousness of the Supreme Brahma. So this gives us the outline of the actual path. This foundation of karma yoga is not something that we can give up when we advance on the path. It's like the foundation of a building. If you want to build a high building, you have to dig a deep foundation. Just like a tree's roots go as deep into the soil as the tree grows above it. So this karma yoga is never given up, even by the great souls. And we've mentioned the example of Ramana Maharshi, who used to cook in the kitchen every day. He had no need to do that for himself, but he did it as an example to others and to show how karma yoga is essential even to a realized being. Now, this is the truth. So that's why we criticize the Neo-Advaita philosophy that says, oh, you can drop all of this external religious rituals and all this, uh, you know, pious activities and stuff like that. You don't need any of that. You just, just think of yourself as Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi. <laughs> well, that's nice. Except if you actually watch the mind, you can sit and think that you're Brahman for a few minutes, but then the mind will jump to something else. What you're having for, for dinner tonight, or you know that, that cute date that you uh, wanna meet uh, this weekend, or your job, or you know, the pandemic, or whatever it is that you're obsessed with. The mind cannot be controlled by effort of will but it can be controlled by the deliberate creation of many, many impressions of a certain quality. And that is the method of karma yoga, which when mature, automatically develops into bhakti yoga. You don't have to change your activities. You only have to change your attitude. 
And that is the essence of advancement on the spiritual path. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.